in March, you told us that you, you practically broke your arm patting yourself on the back for not voting in January to just eliminate the ACA. You told us that that was because you didn't think that health care could be solved in a couple of months. It's too complicated. It took you three weeks. Three weeks to go from it's too complicated and it can't be done quickly to I've got a huge pile of excrement here that is a horrible mess of a bill that 17% of the population wanted, that the CBO said was gonna kick 24 million people off of health insurance. Three weeks, Congressman. Three weeks, Tommy boy. That's all it took for you to go from, I'm not gonna do it that quickly, to I've got a yes vote in my pocket and I'm gonna use it. They took that vote off the bill because they knew that it wasn't gonna pass. I thought, thank God, thank God. We're not going to have to do that. It took a couple of days, and a couple of more days, and then suddenly we got the MacArthur Amendment. Congratulations. You're in history now. You're in the national spotlight. And that's one thing I want to talk about, the national spotlight. You keep talking about all the constituents that you have to adhere to. And over in this county, they believe one thing. And over in this county, they believe another thing. And you're trying to thread that needle. Well, you haven't threaded it at all. Everyone that is going to be losing from this, you have not addressed. You have not addressed it properly. You have not addressed it fully. You have ignored us. I have called your office incessantly, and I get people who don't know what's going on. I don't get any return phone calls. If I ever get fax or email, I get a form letter that informs me about what I contacted you about and why you can't do anything about it because it's still in committee. You look forward to taking my opinions into consideration. You have not taken my opinions into consideration. Too complicated. It's not gonna get done in months, three weeks. I don't what's understand. Your, what's your question? Oh, we haven't even begun. I'm not done with you yet. I got the mic and I'm not going anywhere. Turn off the power. I got a very loud voice. This ain't over yet. My wife was diagnosed with cancer when she was 40 years old. She beat it, but every day, every day, she lives with it. She thinks about it. Every pain, every new something going on somewhere, is it coming back? Is this cancer? Do I have it again? Is it gonna kill me this time? Is it gonna take me away from my children? Speaking of which, my children, both have pre-existing conditions from birth. One cardiac, one thyroid. You have been the single greatest threat to my family in the entire world. You are the reason I stay up at night. You are the reason that I can't sleep. What happens if I lose my job? I'm very fortunate, sir. I have a really good job, and I have really good health insurance, and we can all be if we have peace of mind. But now my wife, who every day is wondering if she's gonna get cancer, is it happening now? Well, it didn't happen now, but what about now? Now also has to contend with, what if my husband loses his job? If I lose my job, we can't afford COBRA. We can't afford to get private insurance. We get it from my employer. If I lose it, it's gone. If I lose my job on a Monday, if I'm lucky enough to find a job on a Tuesday, which never happens, they will not have insurance ready for me. I will not be eligible for three to six months. If I lapse my coverage within 63 days, suddenly, I'm in a high-risk pool. My pre-existing conditions, which I don't give a shit about, go after me. Come after me, I don't care. But you came after my, you came after my wife. You came after my kids. I have sympathy for your mother. I have sympathy for your daughter. But you did not learn the lessons they were trying to teach you. Because this is what you did to us. In this district, you do not listen, but your actions affect the entire country.
There is no one in this country that your actions are not going to affect. So everyone's voice is important. And when 17% of the population said, don't do it, you did it. This man is correct when he said that you brought it back from death. Ryan said it's dead. Trump said it's dead. And you said, nope, I got a better idea. Last time in Waretown, you told us that you went to Congress to fix problems, that you didn't want to decorate a chair, that you didn't want to choose between being an obstructionist and I want to get something done. That was the keenness of your intellect that you only had two choices in front of you. Don't be an obstructionist or make something better. Well, there was a horrible bill available to you from a horrible group of people who believe that we don't deserve health insurance. They have said it on TV, on camera. Well, then you're not paying attention. And that's your responsibility. They said it. They said that if we get sick, it's our fault. These are the people that are in your party that you're working with. These are the people that came up with a plan that's going to kill millions of people. The CBO scored it, 24 million people off of health insurance. And they call that choice. Like we're choosing not to have health insurance if we can't afford it. That is insulting. That is detrimental to the mental health of us as a nation. But all of this, all of it, totally misses the point. Healthcare is not a good. You do not buy health insurance the same way you buy a car, the same way you buy a house. Those are already complicated things to do. You gotta know about cars, you gotta know about houses at least a little bit, but there are reasonable ways to be educated on those things and make reasonable choices. I work in healthcare, sir. It is complicated. The only one that doesn't believe that it's complicated is an orange-haired buffoon sitting in the White House. And you're working with him to take something that he doesn't understand, that he won't be responsible for, because he's going to be fine. You're working with him, you're working with Ryan, you're working with people that don't care about us. If you want to make something better, you could have made the ACA better directly. You could have made sure that all the funding that you're saying that we need right now, just put it in there. Introduce a bill. Show me what you're made of. Show me that you know what's going on, that you can actually do something instead of siding with people that clearly, by the virtue of their own words, do not care. They want their money back. That's their version of compassion. But the point is, is that healthcare is not like buying anything else. You cannot expect people to be good consumers of healthcare. Another wonderful talking point. Thank God for the GOP for giving us that one. We need to be better consumers of healthcare. You're supposed to be vetting doctors and vetting hospitals and knowing what an MRI costs and knowing what a CT scan costs. And if I need a cardiac catheterization, how much does that cost? And does it cost different if I have this doctor or this doctor? It's completely immoral. And this is the point, Congressman. This is the point. Because health insurance as a for-profit business is immoral. When I am drowning, and you insist that I pay before you will save me, that is immoral, sir. Completely. You have no legs to stand on. You want to make money off of me. If you're in insurance, you want money off of me. And the reason that it's not going to go to single payer is not because you don't believe it. It's because you know that the insurance companies have a powerful lobby and they would decimate you. Yes. Yes. Donald Trump has woken us up. 30, 40 years. And we have been slowly going to sleep. Just watch your reality TV. It's American Idol at 8 o'clock. That's what's important. That's what they want. 
no more. You came from my, you came from my wife. I will not forgive. I will not forget. I don't want to hear your response. I'm not interested. I've heard it already. I heard it in Weartown. I've been watching you on TV, and I read the bill that you sponsored. I read the one that you were willing to say yes to. I know exactly what's going on, Congressman. I'm not an idiot. I see it. Everyone here knows what's going on. Everyone in the country knows what's going on. You owe it to everyone. Your fundamental principle is flawed. I don't have any choice with an insurance company. I have no value to an insurance company. I can't do anything to their CEO. I can't do anything to their employee. Nothing. I can argue till I'm blue in the face. But a single payer run by the government? Oh yeah, it's got problems, but it's also got elections. And you're gonna find that out in 2018.